Good morning! Today we are going to learn about another type of habitat called a grassland habitat. There are many grassland habitats in the world, but we are going to be learning about one particular one, the East African savanna. Savanna is another word for grassland. Here is the East African savanna on the map. Today, when you're listening, I want you to think about how the East African savanna may be the same or different from the Arctic and the Sonoran Desert habitats. Okay, here comes Rattenbro. Rattenbro, your intrepid adventurer here to show you something a little different. Intrepid means fearless. We've been talking about habitats, the places where plants and animals live, and we've spent time in three of the most extreme habitats in the world, the freezing Arctic tundra, the Arctic Ocean, and the scorching Sonoran Desert. Now I've come to a habitat that should be of great interest to you. Some of the most famous animals in the world live here. Welcome to the East African savanna. Savannah is another name for grassland, a wide open, vast stretch of grass covered land. You know you're in a grassland when there is a lot of grass around you, but not many trees or bushes. The East African savanna has very warm weather all year round. However, it only has two seasons the rainy summer and the dry winter. The plants and animals that live here have had to adapt to these two very different kinds of weather in the summer and winter. Luckily, I brought my umbrella in case it starts to pour. Boy, I can barely see a thing in this tall grass. There's so much of it. As the name grassland suggests, grass is the most important plant growing in the savannas. The grasses are very hardy which means they can survive a tough condition of their habitat. Long spells of dry, hot weather, as well as heavy rainfall and flooding. The grass has adapted to these conditions by growing very deep roots. Even if the grass above ground is destroyed, the roots underground survive and the grass can grow back. This grass grows very quickly, as much as an inch per day. The grass in your backyard might take a whole week to grow an inch. Yikes, I'm surrounded by hooves. That's because grass is food for many of the larger animals, like elephants, zebras, gazelles, and antelope. They chew on grass all day long. I don't think grass is all that tasty, to tell the truth, but these animals depend on the nutrients in the grass to survive. It's all they need to eat. It would seem that because so many animals eat the grass in the savanna every day, there wouldn't be very much grass left after a while. But remember that this grass grows back very quickly, so there is usually plenty for the different herbivores, like zebras and antelopes to eat. Grass is not the only important source of food in the savanna. Many animals get their meals from the acacia tree. Giraffes, with their long necks and tongues, are able to eat twigs and leaves from the top of the akasha. Not only are giraffes' tongues long, they are also very tough. It's a good thing, too, because the twigs on the akasha tree are covered with sharp thorns that the giraffes eat along with the twigs and leaves. Elephants eat grass, and they like akashas, too. They rest in the akasha's shade and eat the akasha leaves, branches, and seeds. They even like to strip off the bark and chew on it. Since we know elephants eat grass and parts of the acacia tree, are elephants carnivores, herbivores, or omnivores? You guessed it, they're herbivores. I think this acacia tree might be great to climb and get a better look at the savanna. But don't forget that it's covered in prickly thorns. Ouch! Acacias have adapted well to their habitat. Akashas have small leaves that don't dry out as quickly as larger leaves would in the dry hot months. The roots of an akasha grow very deep into the ground, which allows them to collect water far from underground when there is not much rainfall. And their sharp thorns help keep some animals from eating too many of the branches. These trees are right at home in this habitat. Animals living in the savanna have adapted to their habitat in many ways. 
Some animals, like the giraffe, have long, powerful legs so that they can quickly run away from predators, animals that hunt and kill other animals. Their long legs also help them travel long distances searching for food. Can you imagine a rat like me keeping up with a giraffe or a zebra? Not a chance. Now, there's a little bird that's been sitting on this giraffe the whole time we've been watching. This is an oxpecker. Oxpeckers perch on the backs of large animals. This oxpecker will use its sharp claws to hold on to the giraffe, who will hardly even know it's there. The giraffe and the oxpecker coexist. When two animals coexist, it means that they live together peacefully. The oxpecker feeds on the fleas and ticks living on the giraffe's body and warns the giraffe of any predator that might be trying to sneak up on it. In turn, the giraffe will let the oxpecker live on its back and provide the oxpecker food, fleas and ticks, shelter, and protection from predators. The oxpecker will spend most of its life on the giraffe's back. What a partnership! So here I am, back in all this tall grass, and I bet you recognize the black and white stripes of the zebra I've just run into. Zebras are specially adapted to living in the savanna. They have strong, long legs that make them very good at outrunning lions and other predators. And the stripes on the zebra's legs and body don't just make it look pretty. They camouflage the zebra against the grass so that predators can't see it. Zebras eat the grass on the savanna, so they are herbivores. Over there, I can see the largest land animal in the world. Can you guess what it is? The African elephant is very big and eats up to 400 pounds of trees and grasses every day. That's about the same amount as the weight of nine first graders. African elephants are adapted to the hot weather and the savanna. They have huge ears that they flap like fans to stay cool and keep away bugs. They also have thick skin that protects them from branches and thorns. Do you see the trunk on that elephant? An elephant uses its trunk for all sorts of things. The trunk is, of course, the elephant's nose for breathing and smelling. But the trunk is also used like a hand for lifting things, gathering food, and even holding onto other elephants' tails. Baby elephants or calves use their trunks to grasp other elephants' tails to keep them from wandering away from the rest of the herd and getting lost. Elephants also use their trunks to drink water. They suck up the water with their trunks and then put the water from their trunks into their mouths. They also use their trunks like a hose for showering and playtime. These animals are lions. Lions live in groups called prides. The females, or lionesses, do most of the hunting. They are carnivores that hunt zebras, elephants, and all kinds of other savanna animals. Most groups of lions have just one or two male lions. The male lion is huge and incredibly strong. It has a furry mane, powerful jaws, and fearsome claws. Unless this lion meets a stronger lion, no other animal in the savanna habitat can match the lion's strength and power. Animals that are hunted by predators are called prey. One of lions' favorite prey to hunt and eat are zebras. Zebras try to use the camouflage of their stripes to hide in the grasses of the savanna so the lions will not see them. Up at the top of this tree, I can see and hear birds that are waiting for the lions to finish eating so they can have dinner. These birds are called vultures. A vulture is a scavenger, which as you have learned, is an animal that eats leftovers. All of the animals and plants you've learned about so far are part of something we call the food chain, which is illustrated in this page. What do you see at the bottom of the picture? It's the savanna grass. The arrow points from the savanna grass to the zebra because the zebra eats the grass. The next arrow points from the zebra to the lion because, you guessed it, the lion eats the zebra. The next picture after the lion is a picture of the soil because eventually the lion dies and its body becomes a part of the soil. Then more grass grows out of that soil 
and that starts the chain all over again. Next, I think we should head to a habitat that's a bit closer to home and explore some plants and animals that might look quite familiar to us. But for now, I'm going to check out more wildlife. I'll see you later. The end.